occasion. And so we sing this for you again. He promised us that he would be a counselor, a mighty God. tried him and I found his promises are true he's everything he said that he would be the finest words I know could not begin to tell just what Jesus means to me He's more wonderful than my heart can believe. He goes beyond my highest hopes and fondest dreams. He's everything, He's everything that my soul So much more, he's more than amazing, more than marvelous, more than miraculous could ever be. He's more than wonderful, that's what Jesus is to me. Stand amazed when I think the King of glory would come to live within the heart of man. And I marvel just to know He really loves me when I think of who He is and who I am. For He He's more wonderful than my heart can believe. He goes beyond my highest hopes and fondest dreams. He's everything, He's everything that my soul ever longed for. He's everything that He promised. And so much more, he's more than amazing, more than marvelous, more than miraculous could ever be. He's more than wonderful, that's what Jesus is. My soul ever longed for He's everything that He promised And so much more He's more than amazing He's more than amazing More than marvelous That's what my Jesus is More than miraculous That's what my Savior is Could ever be He's more than wonderful More than wonderful That's what
Oh, man, we done had church. <laughs> Tell you what, you don't need me. You got the Watts. Man, let's say thank you one more time. We love you guys. Wow. Man, just with that song, an exciting morning just got even more exciting. Um, I'm so glad you're here. I know it's cloudy. I know the windows are a little tinted. I know you might feel a burden to fall asleep. Don't do that. All right. We'll point you out. All right. As I mentioned, um, this is a very exciting day, a very exciting morning in the history of Bacon Heights. Um, We have our grand opening of the Launch Center just outside. And to kick us off with this great domestic church resource center, information center, uh, we are beginning a four-week series this morning through the month of October, called It Starts at Home. And and this is critical to the identity of who we are as a church, but it's critical to the advancement of the kingdom of God through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, The Launch Center is is designed to, to help individuals and families in all of life's stages to be intentional to pass on a legacy of faith to the next generation. And so at Bacon Heights, we we have said this often and we will continue to say it. We believe the Great Commission begins in the home, my friends. And so what we call the home is the domestic church. And let me just kind of quickly give you uh, our definition of a domestic church. The domestic church identifies the home as the primary context for lifelong intergenerational spiritual formation. That's what we believe. And so here's the thing. You may be here this morning and you might be thinking this series or the launch center is not for me. And maybe you feel left out in some form or fashion. Maybe even you're considering after this morning kind of skipping the next few weeks until we move on to the next series because this doesn't mean anything to you. Can I just challenge that way of thinking this morning? Because sometimes and when we're maybe a single adult, a college student, an empty nester, a, a senior adult, a child, or even a teenager, and we begin to talk about the home, we immediately kind of remove ourselves because we think it simply involves having children. And I'm here to tell you that's not right. we got to challenge that way of thinking and, and understanding. The biblical principles that we are going to examine this morning and throughout this month They apply whether you have children at home or not. If you're a believer and a follower in Jesus Christ, this is important to you. And as a family, a legacy of faith to the next generation requires us all to be all in. No matter whether our children are at home or not, or whether you've had children at all in your life. So here's the fact. I believe you're here for a reason this morning. I believe God has something to say to you This morning as a believer in Jesus Christ. And so I want us to pause for just a moment and to pray together and to pray that that God would reveal himself to us in some way, some new way today. And that you would not simply fall into the mentality of this doesn't have any meaning for me. So let's pray together. Lord, this morning. We come here today and we come in all stages of life. We come together this morning as a family, as as those who claim to be Christians and followers of Jesus Christ. And I pray, Lord, that you would remove any thinking or mentality today that would say, this is not for me. This is just for those that have kids. And God, that's, that's not true. We know, Father, that no matter what, the Bible applies to our lives in every form and fashion, no matter where we fall on the scale. And so, Father, today, would, would you begin a movement in our hearts? Would you begin a movement in our minds? Help us to have the mentality that what starts at home changes the world. So, Father, I pray for those who are, are single adults here today, those who are college students, empty nesters, senior adults, a child, a teenager, wherever they might be in life, Lord, 
Would you speak to their hearts today? Challenge us as a church to do things according to what your word calls us to do. Now, this is an exciting, thrilling moment in the 48-year history of Bacon Heights. But more than anything, it's an exciting, thrilling moment to see the Spirit of God infuse every area and every home represented in this church family. And so this morning, may the words come off the page. May they be implanted into our hearts. And may we apply the truth of the gospel. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is a movement, my friends. And it's the beginning of a movement. And I believe if we're going to change the nation that we live in, if we're going to change our churches, it starts at home. I, I believe that with everything that I am. Did you know that less than 10% of kids who attend church on a regular basis, less than 10% talk about faith issues at home. Less than 10% of kids who come to church talk with their parents or their grandparents about faith issues at home. So here's what that means. Here's what that looks like. You load up your car with your screaming children and you drive to church and maybe you spend an hour, possibly two, if you attend a Bible study. You drive to lunch, you go home, you take a nap, you watch the game, and nobody talks about faith. Now don't get me wrong, we might ask, what did you learn in Bible study or what story did you talk about? But we don't talk about life-changing faith issues in our home, and that's a problem. Because, see, if less than 10% of kids that are going to church are talking about faith issues in your homes, then why do we even wonder why our kids walk away from their faith when they graduate? It's on us. It starts at home. And, friends, it's not just talking about God. It's about living out a life-changed, important process of transformation in front of your family. Not just talking about God. But living out truth. They need to see that something has changed in your life. If you were at the Park Ridge Banquet on Monday night. You heard Josh McDowell share an incredible message. With the 1500 people that were there. It was a wonderful time to be together. Let me share with you one thing that Josh McDowell said. That should blow our minds as a church family. McDowell said that unless a child is reached with the gospel by the age of 12, they stand a 4% chance of developing a biblical worldview. 4% chance. Now notice what he did not say. He did not say that by the age 12 you stand a 4% chance of coming to salvation in Jesus Christ. He didn't say that. What he said was by age 12... If they haven't been reached with the gospel, there's a 4% chance that they develop a biblical mindset, a biblical worldview. And what that means is they no longer discover truth, they simply create truth on their own. And that's a very, very big problem. Because scripture says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. How do you know the truth? You discover the truth of the gospel. But if we don't reach them, if it doesn't start at home, and if less than 10% of kids going to church are talking about faith issues at home, 4% of them stand a chance of ever knowing the truth of the gospel. They may come to faith in Jesus Christ, but they walked an aisle, they got wet at church, but it never transformed their lives. And that's why this is so critical. That's why we, it, we, we change the nation and we change our churches when we understand the role of who we are and what we do. We live in a service economy. And we have outsourced everything. We've outsourced the, our lawn care. We've outsourced our, our house cleaning. 
We've outsourced the raising of our children because both parents work at home and nobody has time to invest in their kids. And we've outsourced the spiritual formation of our children to the church. Friends, that's not the biblical model. And we wonder, we wonder why kids don't, don't stay involved in, in the life of their faith. It's because we outsourced it to somebody that it was never intended to be in the hands of. And friends, our job as a church, our job at Bacon Heights is to equip you to inspire and nurture the faith in your home. And we are going to remind you about that again and again and again. And we will do so unapologetically. Because scripture tells us very clear, the mandate is that it starts at home. So we're going to look at two passages this morning. One that you should be somewhat familiar with in my tenure as your pastor. And that's Deuteronomy chapter 6. So I want to invite you to turn there. But then also you want to maybe hold a finger, put your worship guide or something uh, in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. Now when we talk about spiritual formation, I think it's important that we understand to begin with what is spiritual formation. Well, Deuteronomy chapter 6 tells us exactly what that is. We, we have the Shema passage in, in verse 4 of Deuteronomy 6. The Lord God is one. And then in verse 5, we have, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. But right here in verses 6 and 7, spiritual formation is expressed to us. Let's read it together. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. The problem in our world is not what's happening in our churches. It is what desperately needs to happen in our homes. And our basis for the Launch Center, leading and uniting church and home, that's the acronym for the Launch Center. Our basis for the Launch Center and for the need to train families to engage in spiritual formation comes from Deuteronomy 6. Notice what Moses did not say. Moses did not say in verse 6 that um, these words which I command you today shall be on the church's heart. And the church shall teach them diligently to your children. Moses did not say that. Moses was very specific when he said, These words shall be on your heart, and you are to teach them to your children. Do you see the responsibility? You cannot outsource the spiritual formation to the church. You love the, God, the Lord your God with the totality of your being. And you teach them to your children. You teach them to your grandchildren. Spiritual formation is very simply this. It is teaching the next generation to become more like Jesus Christ. That's what spiritual formation is. It's not complicated. It's understanding your responsibility and your role. And Bacon Heights believes and will ensure that it happens. That spiritual formation begins at home. And we want to do everything we can in our power, in our understanding to equip you to make that happen. I think that the home is where children experience the tangible embodiment of spiritual realities. Tangible. Moments where they grasp the truth of the gospel and the kingdom of God. Spiritual formation is a lifelong process. It's not a one-time event. And we simply cannot think that once a child comes to faith in Jesus Christ, we have nothing more to do. No, the work has just begun. Spiritual formation is a lifelong process. I was asked this morning, Standing at the launch center. And someone said, well, I have grandchildren. One's age 17 and one's 26. It's not too late, is it? I said, absolutely not. 
There's work to be done in the lives of your grandchildren. We want to help you with that. Every life stage, every family is important. The home cannot be the church any more than the church can be the home. We must understand our roles. And nothing influences the spiritual formation process more than how diligent or how delinquent we are in modeling and reinforcing godly character at home. Nothing is more important than how diligent or how delinquent we are in the spiritual formation process. So how do you begin to make this change? How do you begin, no matter where you are, to make this happen in your home? Let's answer that question together. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, is our first thought this morning. And here it is. It begins with a declaration. Look at what Joshua says in verse 15 of chapter 24. If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served, which were beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. All good change begins with a declaration. We have five folks in our second service that are going to begin a declaration in their lives this morning by following through in baptism. And they are going to declare to everyone that is here in that service, I am a follower of Jesus Christ and I am following him in obedience and baptism. All good change begins with a declaration, friends. And so if we want our, our families to change, if we want our homes to change and to, see, and to see spiritual formation occur, somebody is going to have to make a declaration. And coming to church is no declaration. Coming to church is a habit. Coming to church is important. But coming to church is no declaration than to say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And can I just pause for a moment and say to every male in this room, you're the ones that should lead that charge. As the God-ordained spiritual leader in your home, do your job. Do your job. Make the declaration. And if we truly believe this, then it has to go beyond stenciling Joshua 24, 15 on our wall. It has to go beyond going down to Mardell's and buying a beautiful piece of artwork with this scripture reference on it and hanging it in your living room and saying, that's our declaration. No, no, no. Somebody in the home has to say, we are going to stop the madness and declare today that our domestic church will serve the Lord. And it all begins with a declaration. It all begins with change. And simply putting this verse on your wall makes no change. That's like coming to church, friends. Faith is best Nourished in the rich soil of a God-honoring, God-fearing home. Stop the madness. One of the best advice that a friend of mine in the panhandle ever gave me. He said, you know, you can spend your life making money. Or you can spend your life making a living. And those are two very different lifestyles. And you can make a lot of money. And both parents can have careers. And you can bring your kids to church. And guess what? Faith never takes root in their heart and their life. Because coming to church became a habit. Nobody ever made the declaration. Nobody ever stopped. And said, you know what? Our schedule is absolutely ridiculous. 
and we got to do something about it. Did you know that your children will not die if they're not involved in everything? Did you know your grandchildren will not die if they're not involved in everything? You're not doing them any favors. Somebody needs to make the change. And dad, granddad, it really is your job. And it's not the church's job for the spiritual formation of your children and grandchildren. We got to begin a movement. And we change the world. It starts at home. That's how important it is. And I think the same challenge that Joshua offers in verse 15 of chapter 24 is, is very similar to what Moses said in Deuteronomy chapter 30. And you can read that this morning. Joshua was calling on Israel to make an honest commitment. He wanted them to declare their single-heartedness. And he was asking them to declare their allegiance to God. You either worship the God of your forefathers, and, and that's a reference to Terah, the, the God in Abraham's days, or the gods of the Amorites in the land that they were living, or he says, you worship Yahweh. Somebody has to decide that. And if we're going to believe together, if we're going to begin a movement together, if we're going to climb the summit and create a partnership with domestic churches and the local church, the time is today to declare your allegiance. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Whatever it takes, whatever adjustments that need to be made, that's what we're going to do. And in Acts chapter 16, verse 31, Paul told the jailer, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your entire household. Declare your allegiance. Do your job. And we want to help you with that. So much so that in your worship guide this morning, you will find what we have created for you as the domestic church 120 days of intentionality. And so I want you to take that out for a moment and to look at it. Because this is our second thought this morning. If we're going to change things, if we're going to do things differently, if we're going to live up to the mandate of Scripture, we declare our allegiance. That's where it begins. And then you take an honest assessment. And so this is an opportunity for you to look at your life individually, to look at your family, to look at your home, and be 100% transparent. Where are we in our faith, in our marriage, in our grandparenting, in our singleness? Where are we? And so you take an appraisal. If you were to go over to South Plains Mall to buy some new shoes... And you weren't sure which store to go to. You go up to one of those black box signs. And you find out the, the dot that says you are here to find the store you want to get to. And so we are giving you a you are here point of reference. This is my assessment. This is my appraisal. This is the true honest reality of who we are and where we're at. At some point, you have to examine where you are so you know where you want to go spiritually. Just like if you were going to the mall to buy shoes. And so there are dozens of life stages and seasons of life that all of us go through and all of us represent here this morning. But glorifying God begins by assessing where you are and reflecting on your declaration helps you determine your destination. And so when you came in, as you look through this, 
And as you pass the launch center and when you leave this morning, I encourage you to go by there. Because on the flap, just on the inside, where it says Family Seasons, you will find 28 different resources available to you this morning. Both in hard copy and on our website. And at the end of our service, we're going to show you exactly how to get there on our website. You can print these at home. You can copy them and then paste them into an email and send them to your grandkids or your kids. You can send them a link to our website and say, hey, you need to check this out. And when your kids come to stay at Nana and Papa camp or whatever name you go by, you're going to have every stinking resource available to you to fill all your time with those kids and invest in the next generation. The excuses stop today. Because the resources are available to you. As a church, we're going to put our money where our mouth is. And we're going to invest in providing you the best possible resources that we can. And we believe this morning that we have begun that process. And so I encourage you to look through that. To take that appraisal. Ask yourself. Ask your family. How am I doing? How are we doing when it comes to living out our faith? Not just talking about God. Living it out. And your honest assessment not only helps you, but it helps us as a church to better understand how we equip your domestic church. And so your honesty benefits us as well. Because we know where you're at in the journey, and how to help you. But let me say this about the 28 different resources available to you. There's more to come, first of all. But in this first rollout, in this initial grand opening, please do not take everything out there. It's not designed for you to do that. It's designed for you to look and examine where you are and then one, no more than two, do you even need to take it this time. It may take you a week, it may take you a month, it may take you longer to process and to understand and to implement all the things that God wants to do. You do more damage, you hurt yourself if you take it all at one time. Because then you don't know where to start. And we've tried to provide that for you, the starting point the domestic church pointers. So take one, maybe two, print one, maybe two, and work through them. Assess. And as we give you more in the weeks and months to come, use what you need at that time. The way I like to look at the launch center and all of these things that we provide your domestic church is to ask yourself, what do I need this week? That will help me get back here next week. Where am I at? What do, what do I need right now? That's going to help me through this week. Through the trials and struggles that I'm facing. And difficulties and circumstances in life. What do I need right now that's just going to help me take that one next step. So that I'm back here next week. One day at a time. One week at a time. One month at a time. One moment at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself because that's very, very easy to do. Well, let's look at the third and last thought this morning back in Deuteronomy chapter 6. It begins with a declaration. As for me and my house, you take an honest assessment. We've provided you that resource this morning. And then the third thing is you, you establish spiritual catalysts. Look in verses 8 and 9 of Deuteronomy 6. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorpost of your home and on your gates. Spiritual catalysts. And these are things that, that go beyond coming on a Sunday morning. Things that you do during the week. How is your domestic church praying together? 
How is your domestic church serving together? How is your domestic church worshiping together beyond the service hour you attend? And Moses is calling on all the families of Israel to establish and then impart spiritual catalyst to the next generation. He says you do these things, these spiritual catalysts, these holy habits, if you will. You do these things when you're at home, when you walk or drive along the way, when you lie down at night, when you rise up in the morning. Now think about these catalysts, the holy habits or spiritual traditions that would allow your family to experience God together. When you think about it, habits don't take a lot of thinking, do they? A lot of times habits just happen. And so how can you connect your habits that you've already established with a new encounter for your family to experience God? And the key to to any catalyst is creativity. The sky's the limit when it comes to what you're doing. I know a family uh, down in the Metroplex area where one of those spiritual catalysts they have in, in implemented into their family is uh, dad leaves for work early every morning. Most often, long before anybody else gets up in the household and mom is a teacher, so she gets all the kids ready for school and they go to school where she teaches, so they all load up and go to, go to work and go to school together. Well, dad knows He's the God-ordained spiritual leader in his home. And so through creativity, every night before he goes to bed, he records himself saying a scripture reference. And he uses his phone to do it. And so then he, he sends that as a text message to his wife. And so when she gets the kids ready and gets in the car, they got about a 10 minute drive to school. She plugs in her phone and she plays that scripture reference. And her kids, their kids, hear dad's voice come over the speakers in their car teaching them scripture. You see, they're working in a spiritual catalyst to the habits of who they are and their habits of the day. They didn't recreate the wheel. They just said, where are we at? What is our spiritual rhythm? What are the habits and the lifestyles of where we are that we can begin to impart the truth of the Scriptures to our kids? Because if if you don't help them discover it, they'll create it on their own. And so how how can you and your, your schedule, your daily rhythms of life, Begin to establish these spiritual catalysts. How can you create room in your schedule? What madness needs to stop? You don't have to be involved in everything. So that your kids know. And they see how you live out the truth of the gospel. You see, these habits, they can develop and promote annual traditions. Opportunities to celebrate what God has done in your life. To celebrate what God is doing in your family. It does not matter what you do. It simply matters whether you are intentional about doing anything at all. And the Launch Center is going to provide you everything possible. Next week I'm going to share with you one of about 50 faith at home cards that we are going to begin to roll out and to put into your hands. And there are no excuses for not being intentional in your home. We're going to give you simple ways of investing in the faith formation of your kids and your grandkids. Maybe you need to organize a family night. I don't know what that looks like for you. Maybe you need to plan as the holidays come ahead and some of the things that we provide you that you take them with you when you go to see your grandkids and you make a point to not just take them to the zoo and not just take them to a movie but to do an activity together and to show them how scripture applies you can change 
a kid's life. Adjust your schedule. Limit your busyness. Because in the blink of an eye, they go from toddler to teenager. In the blink of an eye, they're out of your home. And we're going to talk more about children next week. And their role and their responsibility. Be here. Don't miss that. It's important. Here's the thing. The more research and study that is done about young adults and young families today and why they disengage and why they remove themselves from the church as they get older, you know what study shows us? It's not that they reject our doctrine. It's not they reject our beliefs. It's not they even reject our worship style. It's that they reject our hypocrisy. And they want nothing to do with that. The home is the primary place of one's spiritual formation. For better or for worse. Home is the first and most consistent context in which we prove ourselves worthy and we make ourselves ready to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. Somebody declare that today. Assess where you are individually, as a family, in a marriage. Where are you? And then establish some changes in your life. The choice is yours. The resources are free. The path is optional. The mandate is clear. But it really comes down to what are you going to do? Now don't boo me for this statement. But the University of Texas has a motto, has a saying that what starts here changes the world. But the truth is, what starts at home changes the world because it transforms families. And strong families make strong churches. A new day is here, and the movement has begun. Let's pray together. Father, this morning, we recognize that over decades, we've gotten it backwards. And as churches, we have allowed families, we have allowed parents, we have allowed grandparents an easy out to do in their job. Because we've simply said, bring them to us. Outsource your job. You don't have time. And let us invest in your kids. And because of that now, we're facing a world that is creating truth on their own rather than being led to discover the truth of the gospel by those who claim to be Christians and believers in Jesus Christ. Lord, may we change our ways. May we change our thinking. The spiritual formation begins in the home. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. God, I pray the men in this room will make that declaration. I pray the families in this room would recognize that it's time to stop the madness and the craziness of where we're living and we're just running kids and shuffling them from one place to another. And we never stop. We never pour into them. We never live out our faith in front of them because all we do is take them to the next activity. God, may we assess where we are honestly. I pray for the marriages in this room that might be struggling. They're just holding on. God, I pray today. They say, we got to make some changes. Maybe for that family that, gosh, they've had a prodigal child. 
struggling with whatever difficulty they might be facing. Father, would you help them to face that reality? To assess, praise where they're at? And then help us all to establish these catalysts of faith. Small things, God, that could transform our families. It's a new day. Bacon Heights is going to lead the charge in this great community because it starts at home. In just a moment, as you continue to pray, we're going to have a time of response, a time of invitation. And maybe you need to declare as an individual or as a family, today, we're going to begin a movement to serve the Lord in every area of our life. We're going to impress upon our our kids and our grandkids. We're going to impress upon those that we come in contact with at Walmart or the mall. In your travels. As we stand together in just a moment, it's a time for you to, to respond to God. Maybe that means you stay where you're at. Maybe that means you come forward and Talk to Truman or Jim. Maybe you come as a family, you pray. I know you've got Bible study to go to, go to but don't rush. This is a time to reassess, to recalibrate our lives and, and the intentionality of our faith. God, in this moment, we give all of it to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together. And let's sing. This is your time.